According to Stack Overflow Developer Survey 2022, over 53% of software developers say that inconsistent or unclear code formatting makes it harder for them to work with the code written by others. That's why it's important to understand the principles of formatting code and how they can help you write code that's easier for others to understand and maintain. You are watching 100 GB and welcome to episode 5 of the Clean Code series. This series is all about this great book called Clean Code written by Robert C. Martin. And today we will talk about formatting. Okay, the purpose of formatting. Well, the real question is why do we even care about formatting? The answer is that when someone is reading the code, we really want the eyebrows to raise. We want them to perceive that professionals were at work when writing this code. The code should not look like it was written by drunk sailor. I'm terribly sorry, I didn't know. It also affects the long-term maintenance and the extensibility of the code because the code is written once but read multiple times. Another thing that is nice about the formatting and style is the code itself keeps changing, but the style will stick along for the entire life cycle of the product or the service, unless there's a like a technological shift to some new language. Okay, let's get to the first part, which is vertical formatting. The book mentioned this uh, newspaper metaphor. Well, it can also be thought of as a website metaphor. A newspaper is composed of several headlines with brief information. If it interests you, you can dive deeper into it. And the newspaper also has different types of articles in different columns and sections. They can be small, big, or take up the entire page. This organization helps the reader to digest the newspaper in their own way. Had it been a long story or an essay, no one would really read it. The same thing applies to the code as well. Code should be structured and well formatted. Otherwise, no one will really read it. Next, let's talk about vertical openness between the concepts. Let's take a look at the code. So here we have a code. Uh, the name of the class is My Network Manager. And just look at this code. It's a mess. I mean, without proper spacing in between, it, it's really hard to comprehend this code. Now let's take a look at an improved version of the same code. Okay, well if you see, it has a profound effect on the readability when we put blank spaces between the concepts or blocks. This can be regarded as a, a kind of a block where all the instance variables are. Then space, then we have the constructor, then space, we have the uh, like another method, then space, methods and classes and it looks beautiful now. Okay, next we have the vertical density. It's more like the parts of the code which are closely associated, either logically or by the language semantics should be dense. So let's take a look at the code. Okay, so uh, if you see this code, my power manager, it has a few instance variables and the constructor. Right now it looks sparse. Uh, this, there, we have this unnecessary spacing in between. Let's try to put some density into it. Okay, uh, if you go by the language semantics uh, for Java, let's keep the static final together. Let's keep the final variables together and uh, don't need any. I don't see any reason to put this blank space here. I mean, just by removing three blank lines, it's looking a lot better. It's readable. The reader will clearly be able to see the constants and the other instance variables. Next, we have the vertical distance based on conceptual affinity. It's very similar to density, but it's more broad. Have you ever read a class where you are constantly scrolling up and down because methods placement is totally random? Before looking at the code, let's identify the methods that uh, have conceptual affinity. So the methods which are associated by a call or methods performing a similar operation. Let's take a look at the code. All right, we have this class called Wi-Fi Manager. A couple of methods here. If we start looking at the methods as a reader, we have this get configured networks list, uh, returns a list of uh, Wi-Fi configurations, which is fine. By the way, this code is taken from AOSP. And this code is used by, I, I think the settings app or the, if, you, if, you've, if you've seen your drop down the notifications panel over there, we have all the Wi-Fi shortcuts. I think that particular piece of code also uses this manager. Anyway, uh, we have this method called add network. All right. I'm now as a reader, I'm wondering if there is some method to remove the network as well. There is this method of connect like to connect. Uh, I think it connects to given uh, network ID with the password. Now I'm wondering where is the disconnect method? It's not here. Uh, either I have to scroll down or I just have to search for it. And oh, there is a disconnect method. Now you see, uh, if you have code like this, this is, which is meant to be read multiple times, 
it's like wastage of time for multiple engineers which translates to a wastage of resources for the company or the organization so what we mean here is that all the methods which are which have affinity to each other they should be together or the vertical distance between them should be as small as possible okay let's take a look at an improved version of the code okay wi-fi manager we have a uh, first method is set wi-fi enabled and the other method is is wi-fi enabled of course they are linked they have affinity then we have get configured networks or get configured network given a network id fair enough then we have add network remove network pretty good connect disconnect wow now i'm just loving this code start scan get scan results and this is a private method which i guess is used by a couple of these methods internally okay uh, let's now talk about variable declarations the local variables should be declared close to their first use as young programmers we have this habit to define the variables at the top of the function which takes a mental toll when reading the code let's take a look at the code now uh, we have this method called update state which takes in the new state and a few arguments okay the name of these arguments is really bad anyway they have uh, it has a reason and reason is not being used at least in the first first whatever first 10 lines of the function uh, the function is really long which it shouldn't be okay so as a reader i'm really confused what is this reason doing and i have to scroll down okay now i see this is probably related to some kind of disconnection uh, the reason for the disconnection okay i think we can certainly do better here if you move this reason closer to its first use and potentially just rename it to uh, like a more appropriate name okay now as a reader if i start reading the code from the top okay i just see old state okay it is doing some kind of state check if, if there is no change in the state the method does nothing and if we if i scroll down now i am encountered with this concept of uh, disconnect reason which is fine because with now it's now is the right time to uh, introduce this concept well in the best case ideally I, I would want this to be in a separate function altogether but just for the sake of describing this concept we have it like this so instance variables are an exception here because uh, those kind of reflect the state of the current object of the class they may go to the top or the bottom depending on the language style but i personally prefer them to be at the top now let's talk about vertical ordering if you haven't figured it out by now that the method which is calling other methods should be at the top this way reading code feels very natural and spontaneous okay let's talk about horizontal formatting now the first thing is horizontal openness and density well horizontal spacing is no rocket science here first question is how long the the horizontal lines should be the answer is simply as much as you can fit on one physical screen aosp style uses 100 characters which i think is a sweet spot nice Mostly blank spaces are added around uh, braces, operators, or before arguments so that the code reads fine. Let's take a look at some code. All right, over here, if you see the bad version of the code, there is no space around uh, the operators, which is, okay, that's debatable. Maybe I'm in the habit of seeing such code, so this looks good to me. But in general, I think it's still better to put spaces around the operators. Now, uh, the next thing is the horizontal alignment. Let's take a look at the code. So this is a pretty interestingly formatted class, uh, abstract cache params. Okay, so the problem with this approach is that the variables are farther away from their type. So if you see these variables, it's slightly discomfort to the eyes to find the type for this particular variable. I mean, it's, we know it's long, but if the list of the variables is very large, it becomes quite uncomfortable to see the type of the variable. And the reader can actually misplace the types in their mind. So there isn't much value in having this kind of horizontal alignment. The next thing is horizontal indentation. Well, the entire premise of writing code is around indentation and you don't need me to tell you that. One thing I'll mention here is about the single line if statements. Let's see the code. Okay, so uh, we have the single line if statement where there is no indentation or uh, this, this particular thing is not even in the next 
line. I personally think that this thing is disastrous. It just breaks the consistent indentation of the blocks and this if condition is actually a block of code. So this is much better and just, just do this. I mean, pretty simple. Think about this. Even if it's like one line in the if or else block, just wrap it with the uh, the opening and the closing braces. And the good news is that a lot of static analyzers and linters, they already support that. Most of the companies, they actually enforce uh, this kind of thing for uh, single line if blocks. Okay, let's uh, spend some time over dummy scopes. Sometimes the body of while or for statement is a dummy and this should not be done. As a last resort, make it explicit and add a comment in the blog explaining why it's dummy. Let's take a look at the code. We have this uh, while loop, which is probably reading uh, from the buffer, maybe just going to the end of the file or something. Anyway. So the book suggests that have it like this, that like at least put a semicolon on the next line. What I'll do is it's even better if you try to be as explicit as possible because the reader might not know what's happening here. So just put a comment saying do nothing as it just needs to read. That's it. Simple enough very explicit to the reader what the score is trying to do and why uh, why it's an empty block okay team rules last but not the least is the rules of the team see whatever we have discussed today won't matter if there is no consistency across the code base the best thing to do is just use one style from the biggest open source project in that language uh, whatever language you're working on and just stick to that use linters and static analyzers to enforce that across all the teammates and save yourself from endless discussions okay and here we are towards the end of the video before you close i would love to hear your thoughts on the series and if you're really learning something new useful and out of the usual let me know in the comment section the purpose of this series is to develop a code sense in the engineers who are early on in their careers so that they can write even better softwares the series will hopefully have like 14 or 15 episodes in total and we are almost midway subscribe to the channel like this video and i will see you in the next one bye